We all know precipitation as that part of the weather cycle. There's evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. But what exactly is precipitation, and why do we care? My name is Jacqueline Fertel, and in today's video, I hope to answer those questions. Precipitation is defined as rain, snow, sleet, or hail, weather that involves something falling from the sky. That something in question is water vapor. Our beautiful bubble in which we live, the atmosphere, is composed of many gases. The majority of the atmosphere is composed of oxygen and nitrogen with a touch of argon. These are our constants, meaning that as long as we've been measuring them, they've maintained the same concentrations. However, another important part of our atmosphere is water vapor, although it's not as uniformly distributed in the air, making it a variable gas along with carbon dioxide and ozone. Now, water vapor condensing and falling out of the sky is essentially precipitation in a nutshell, but nothing on this earth is that easy. As temperatures on earth rise, water evaporates and the evaporated water in the atmosphere becomes water vapor at varied amounts. Evaporation will continue to take place until the air is completely saturated with the vapor. We often measure the saturation as humidity. A relative humidity is defined as the amount of water vapor in the air compared to how much water vapor can be held in the air. Or, as I like to measure it, it is a percent likelihood that I'm going to leave my house and my hair look like a frizzy mess. At 99% humidity, you can catch me inside because I'm not going to risk that bad hair day. Now, as relative humidity is a relative measurement, scientists often lean more towards using dew point to measure the air quality. Now, dew point is a measurement of the temperature at which condensation will occur. Condensation and precipitation will occur when the air reaches its saturation point in order to maintain an equilibrium of that saturation. There are a few different ways that this water vapor can become large enough to fall to Earth's surface. Enter condensation. Now aerosols are actually pivotal in the condensation process. An aerosol is a particle in the air that's not the usual gases. What aerosols do is they provide a platform on which water vapor can condense with other water vapor particles until enough clump together to become large enough to fall to the surface of the earth. We commonly refer to this process as rain. Precipitation, as I mentioned before, depends on temperature, as everything does when discussing weather systems. In the atmosphere, warmer clouds are made up of liquid water vapor, while cold clouds are made up of ice crystals. In warmer clouds, collision coalescence builds up the water droplets. So in the atmosphere, as these water vapor particles are running around, occasionally they will collide into each other. And then if they collide and come together and stick, that's coalescence. So picture like a kid's soccer game and one kid's following the ball and falls as another kid runs into him and falls and another kid and another kid and they pile up into one big pile of kids. It's kind of like that. In colder clouds, the Bergeron effect takes place. Now this process is contingent on the fact that ice has a lower saturation and that the ice crystals will absorb the water vapor in the air and form larger ice crystals. Essentially, at higher altitudes, water freezes at lower than zero degrees Celsius. And at this temperature, the ice crystals collect the water vapor in water vapor deposition. The water vapor that comes in contact with these ice crystals at these low atmospheric temperatures freezes and collects. Now when the precipitation is the large ice crystals falling from the sky, we call it snow. Hail occurs when cool water vapor collects on an aerosol and is blown upward. The hailstone continues to grow more and more as the icy water vapor collects with each rise and fall of the stone. When charting precipitation, rain and hail actually have the same precipitation pattern where the water melts as it falls to the surface of the earth. However, hail has that pattern of freezing and melting that rain does not. Snow, on the other hand, stays below the zero degree Celsius mark as it falls to the earth and collides with the surface. Sleet melts past the zero degrees mark and then refreezes before it hits the surface of the earth. Freezing rain strikes the surface of the earth as a liquid and then refreezes, which is why it's incredibly unsafe. Another unsafe form of precipitation is acid rain, caused by the increasing levels of hydrogen in the air, usually due to pollution. Now this increase of hydrogen causes the water vapor in the air to have a higher acidity as it falls to the earth. Damage from acidic rain, the disastrous effects of a drought, and the fact that without the precipitation cycle, we would all be dead in the desert right now, are reasons that we should appreciate our rain and the weather cycle as we have it, and advocate against things such as the burning of fossil fuels in order to protect our climate and our atmosphere.